In Activity 4, Mapping the Ocean Floor, students learn about the shape of the ocean floor. They first graph sets of ocean depth data and then infer the shape of the ocean floor based on their depth profiles. Students finally create a three-dimensional model of the ocean floor. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 4, Parts A and B, Manila folders, pre-printed graph sheets, sticks of modeling clay, depth data sheets 1 through 8, plastic knife, and a world map. You will also need to provide pencils, rulers, pairs of scissors, ball, classroom globe, and bottles of glue. To prepare for session one, make a copy of activity sheet four, part A, for each student, and a copy of each depth data sheet. Each team of four will need one of the eight depth data sheets, an 11 by 17 sheet of pre-printed graph paper, a pencil, and two rulers. You will also need a globe and a ball that bounces for a demonstration of how sonar works. To begin session one, discuss some of the different landforms that can be found on dry land. Have a few volunteers draw pictures of what those features look like. Students have probably drawn the landforms in profile. If so, inform students that they have drawn an altitude profile, which shows the shape and height of a landform above sea level. Next, ask students, what do you think the ocean floor looks like? Have volunteers draw pictures of their ideas. Explain to the class that a profile that shows the shape of land below sea level is called a depth profile, and that a depth profile tells how deep the water is at different locations and also reveals the shape of a landform below sea level. Let students know to take depth measurements underwater, scientists use sonar devices which transmit sound waves through water and are attached to the hull of a boat. When the sound waves reach the ocean floor, they bounce back like echoes. Because scientists know how fast sound travels through water, they can calculate the depth of the water. This method of depth measurement is also known as echo sounding. To demonstrate how sonar works, bounce a ball on the floor and have students note the time it takes for the ball to hit the floor and then bounce back up again. Then bounce the ball from the same height onto a desk. Ask students in which demonstration does the ball come back more quickly. Students should respond that the ball comes back more quickly when bounced off the desk. To confirm students' understanding, ask, which of these sonar measurements indicates a greater depth? 0.5 seconds or 1.2 seconds. Why? Students should understand that 1.2 seconds indicates a greater depth because the longer the time interval, the greater the distance the sound wave traveled. Next, divide the class into eight teams, one to make each of the depth profiles needed to complete this activity. Distribute one depth data sheet, one piece of 11 inch by 17 inch graph paper, and two rulers to each team. Point out that the vertical axis represents the depth or height in meters along a given latitude. The horizontal axis represents longitude at intervals of 2.5 degrees. Instruct students to write the latitude of their depth profile at the top of their graph. Then have students locate the zero depth line on the vertical axis and draw a straight line across the paper. This line represents sea level and will act as a guide as they graph the depth data. Next, instruct students to graph the data from their depth data sheet and connect the dots with straight lines. The resulting line graph will be the depth profile for their particular latitude. When all teams have finished graphing their data, have them share their sketches with the class. Ask students, how do these depth profiles compare with the pictures of the ocean floor you drew on the board earlier? Some students may be surprised at the variety of shapes along the ocean floor. Distribute Activity Sheet 4, Part A to the class 
and then explain that the diagram at the top of the page shows some of the main features of the ocean floor. Review the different features and have students label the diagram continental shelf, continental slope, abyssal plain, mid-ocean ridge, seamount, island, and rift. Then have students compare their depth profiles with the diagram on the activity sheet. As a class, discuss and answer questions one through seven. Finally, instruct students to write their names on the back of their depth profiles, and then collect the profiles and depth data sheets and store them for session two. To prepare for session two, make a copy of activity sheet four, part B for each student. Each team of four will need their depth profile from session one, one manila folder, one pair of scissors, a small chunk of modeling clay, and some glue. Post the world map that shows the landforms both above and below sea level for all students to see. To begin session two, distribute teams depth profiles and the other materials. Tell students to open the folder, lay it flat, and glue their depth profile to it. Then have students cut out their profile along the axis lines and the graft line. Instruct students to use the clay to make two feet to stand their depth profiles up. Next, clear some space on a work table and have students bring their depth profiles over. Beginning with the 30 degree north latitude, stand the profiles up in order on the table, about a half inch apart. Make sure the edges of the profiles line up. Give students an opportunity to examine the three-dimensional model that results. Then distribute activity sheet four, part B, and inform students that their model represents the section of the Atlantic Ocean outlined by the box on the activity sheet map. Ask students to use their model to complete the map. Tell them to refer to the key at the bottom of the sheet and to use these symbols to represent the different landforms on their map. Finally, post the physical map of the world ocean and have students find the section they profiled and compare it with their own maps. To conclude the activity, discard the paper scraps. Make sure to leave the model on display throughout the module. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.